Hello, it's Gary Fox, and we're back on the um, tutorial number seven. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, anyhow, uh, as you see, I brought up a screen right now, and uh, there's a few things that I wanted to talk about uh, that we hadn't dealt with yet. The question come up to me, can I, uh, what can I do as far as extend and trim with the case of a, a spline, spline curve? So I decided the best way to do it is just to try it. And now I'm going to share that with you. So I'm going to go to the trim function. And I am going to click on the spline to be my uh, limiting entity. And bigger than heck it works. Same thing I can extend to using it. However, if I click on another line and try to extend the spline, it will not extend. And that makes sense because the spline's based upon those points there. But anyhow, now we know. Okay, the other one I wanted to talk about, we're going to be dealing with an ellipse uh, later today. So let's show how to do an ellipse. Uh, there really is only one ellipse function. The other one is just an arc. So the ellipse function, you need to know where the center of the ellipse is. And that's going to cause us a problem when we get back to the car. So once you do that, then it says find the major axis. That's the big part of the circle because an ellipse basically is a squished down circle. Uh, one side squished in comparison to the other. And now we're supposed to find the minor axis so we can draw it, and we've drawn our ellipse. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to show you is uh, the offset function, which is actually for lines. But there is one for circles. And so we go to circle, we go concentric, which is basically an offset. We got a distance of four, and I think that'll look okay. And you see I can draw concentric circles. Okay, let's try that with a, a line. We'll go to line, and we'll do an offset. And you'll see that it works for the lines, and we've done that a bunch in the past. Uh, but it also works for circles. So the question is, will it work for ellipse? And no, it will not. And that makes sense because a bigger ellipse would not have the, uh, would not be the same throughout. It would be bigger at the, at the uh, major axis than it would be at the minor axis. Excuse me, I seem to be uh, draining out here. I am going to delete this document because we don't need it anymore. And uh, we're just going to close it without saving. Okay, now... I'm going to deal with my uh, car video, car picture, and you see that I've moved it into another directory so I can find it quicker. Uh, if I pull that up, I get the car picture, and uh, I was curious if you could send that file to somebody else if you wanted to, and they would get both the picture and the, uh, and the uh, drawing that we've created. So let's see what would happen if I did it in another directory and uh, it works. So that kind of answers it. Now what happens if I change the name of this file? So we're going to rename it. Uh, and now we go to uh, the picture file. To the drawing and all we get is the uh, car body the sketch and by the way I added a whole bunch more half your life anymore seems to be spent watching those little horizontal bars prove that something's happening <laughs> and uh, that happens when I save these videos so that didn't work well I'm curious now will it work on this one or is it referencing this picture right here so I go to this test one I created, and it does work. So it looks as if if you store the uh, both the picture and the uh, 
drawing file in the same directory and then if you sent it on to someone and gave them instructions to put both of them in the same directory it would work okay. Uh, so we'll go back to this one as our real one. We'll rename the file the same as the one up above. And uh, now it should work. And it does. Okay. <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to show you is uh, if we wanted to draw these tires on this, or the wheels and the tires on this car, uh, the, probably the best thing to do is an ellipse. And the reason we have to use an ellipse is that we've got perspective going on because we're looking at the corner of this and not straight on at the side. Things are getting farther away, so they're getting smaller. And that's because our, our uh, vision tends to expand as it gets farther out. You know, it's, it's basically a cone that goes out from our eyes and uh, from a camera lens also. And uh, if you think about any pictures you've seen of railroad tracks where the tracks go out there and they seem to come together way out there in the distance, that's exactly what's going on in this picture, only it's much smaller because it's a lot closer. But that means that the uh, back and the front of this is going to have, is basically the minor axis, the top and the bottom are the major axis. It also means that center is not center. And uh, that's going to be a little bit of a hassle. So we're going to attempt to draw this. And I'm going to go back to go to, uh, and I just turned it off, to level zero. And uh, as I do that, I go to uh, right here. I'm getting ready to, i got to click the button. And I'm going to draw the center of this about on the center. And horizontal will be on the center. Vertical will be my guess. And now I draw my uh, ellipse, and it looks as if I missed it. So we will start all over. Specify center. We'll go a little bit more toward the front. Okay, and now we'll do the major axis. And we're closer. I'd say not quite close enough. It depends on how pickety you want to get. And that's looking pretty close there for the top and the bottom. So we'll go ahead and set that. And now we have to do the uh, minor axis. And we've got our, our uh, what I always called the rim. It's actually, most people call it the wheel. Uh, we'll have it a little bit easier. Whoops, I just opened up something. So we'll have to wait a minute. We'll exit that. And... Uh, We'll now do another one, and our center will be exactly on the center of the other. As a matter of fact, we can probably choose center, and that way we'll be exact. Then we'll go to uh, op free, uh, free selection. I forget exactly what they call that. And we'll go here, and we have our tire. Let's see what it looks like in the picture. Turn picture off. That doesn't look too bad, does it? We'd have to draw the uh, other part of it. We can try doing that. Uh, what we would have to do, we will draw that. I believe the center of that will be a little bit in front of the other centers. And we'll guess that tire bottom be at the same bottom as it was before, but our minor axis will be on out here. And I didn't do a very good job. So let's go back to the center. We need to set this thing a little further forward. And that's going to be a skinny tire. Well, maybe not. That's going to look about right then obviously we're going to have to trim it. So you can get to where you need to go and basically it takes some diddling to do it. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I need to talk about on this one. 
Uh, we could, and let's do that, but first let's delete that last ellipse. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll turn off the picture for a moment. And we'll see if we can do a little better job on our... Um, yeah, I've got some time left on this thing. Nah, not a lot. What we could do is delete this part of the uh, wheel well and then try putting in a, a spline curve. Uh, I don't think I'll have time to finish that in this video. So you got the idea and uh, you can kind of see where the results will be. Obviously I need to do a little work right on this this uh, this part of the grill and then you know I could you could keep right on going. It depends on how far you want to take this thing. Uh, quick 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 statement about where we used it when I was in a fact in the one consulting job. One case I had to uh, do uh, lightning rods on a building and we had to show on that building to give the guy an idea of what he was going to have to estimate where all of the uh, protrusions were coming out of the roof, all the vents, all of the uh, things that stuck up. Uh, that was going to be a pain on that particular building. Luckily the CAD person that I had knew that there was a, uh, a aerial photograph of that building and she was able to pull up that aerial photograph match it up to a scale drawing and on that one you could actually scale up and scale down the uh, the picture. Uh, she scaled it so that it fit the top of the drawing of the building and then was able to sketch in all of the uh, protrusions out of it. In another case we took a photograph of a wall directly onto that wall and then uh, we were going to have to mount an electrical box on the wall so all we did was we referenced from some things that were in the picture the number of feet so we had to take a couple of measurements and we put those on there as uh, dimensions and we roughed in a box and said mount the box right here so that is a use for it as far as using it in an actual drafting environment uh, right now we're kind of doing artwork but you got an idea of, of what it would do. Um, I can't tell you where you'd want to use it. Uh, that's all up to you. But it's one more tool that you have in your toolbox. Anyhow, I think I've done enough damage on this one. I appreciate you listening. This is Gary Fox of Crane Make.